Hi guys and welcome to today's second session. We know today has been very heavy on you, but I hope you, you will enjoy or actually I'm hoping that you'll enjoy today's session, um, the second session. Uh, it's quite interesting. It's about the, sorry, sorry about that. It's an introduction to EOR and polymer flooding. So uh, our speaker for the day uh, is... Nihal, Nihal, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, introduction to water flooding, not polymer flooding. This is the other okay. one. One, one second. Uh, yeah. I'm not okay, sure sorry about that. Going on or not, or... Yeah, to water injection? Today, today okay, so Nihal, we're going to start from the beginning. Anwan, introduction to water flooding. Okay, introduction to water flooding. So, ممكن نبدأ من الأول لو سمحت. Okay, sure. هو بس مش على على المكتوب. دي محاضرة بكرة. اللي معاك دي محاضرة بكرة. تمام. Okay, got the the long bio then. Okay. من الأول وجديد عشان ه همسح كل ده. طيب عشان نسجل. Okay, تمام مش. Okay, guys, welcome to today's session. It's about introduction to water flooding by engineer Mustafa Urtum. Uh, let me introduce our speaker. Uh, our speaker is, as I said, engineer Mustafa Urtam. is a senior reservoir engineer with Petrobel. Uh, engineer Urtam is a senior reservoir engineer working for Balaim Petroleum Company, graduated from Cairo University in 2008. His background and interests are all in well uh, stimulation, reservoir management, mm -hmm. and enhanced oil recovery and field development planning. Uh, he is currently preparing for his master's degree in petroleum engineering from Cairo University. Uh, again, uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the Q&A part. Uh, if you have any comments or do you want to ask me personally about anything or do you have any comments for the speaker, leave them in the chat box. And uh, Engineer Mustafa, thank you so much for joining us today and over to you. Thanks, Nian, for your intro, and thanks for everybody is hearing us. Uh, truly, I do wish the product of this presentation to be beneficial for uh, all of us. So, going directly to our discussion is introduction to water injection, and uh, we are going to now to highlight uh, what is the essential and basic differences between a water injection and water flooding. So now. When we are uh, doing an injection of water in our in oil and gas fields. So the main uh, water injection schemes that you would uh, find it in uh, all of our uh, oil and gas fields. Uh, primarily, there is uh, some injection of the water is being used for a single well tracer test, where we are uh, just a temporary injection of the water accompanied with some uh, organic material like alcohol and the ester are being injected into the formation and reproduced back again. Then by analyzing the uh, effluent and the concentration of the effluent and to produce the fluid back again and seeing how much concentration of alcohol and the ester, we would have uh, some implication and uh, uh, figures about the either the residual oil saturation or initial water saturation. And this uh, a kind of application is uh, pretty or widely used for uh, most of EOR applications. And um, sometimes where the determination of initial water saturation in the challenge the reservoir is uh, quite difficult, uh, like uh, fresh water uh, or the low salinity environment. At that time, this test is uh, considered as one of the basic uh, tool for uh, uh, determining the water saturation and the original oil in place in turn. So there is some injection, uh, or one of the schemes of the in water injection is to conduct what we call it a single well tracer test. Another form of the injection of the water is the disposal, where we are disposing the saline water, or in some times it's being called as produced water reinjection, BWRI. And it's simply it's just we are uh, dumping uh, into the subsurface reservoir rock what we, the water that we were produced, and just we uh, have to make sure that it's, it's uh, a very deep enough from the uh, fresh water uh, environment or from fresh water aquifers. And this uh, has some like an environmental control on the uh, amount of water to be disposed and the amount of oil that is being dispersed into this water. So this is a class form and it's uh, 
uh, used for uh, either oil or gas fields. The third form of the third class of the injection of the water, and this is the main uh, uh, form, is the injection uh, as or you used the water injection as a secondary recovery mechanism or one of the tools of improved oil recovery. And the, the proportionality of the scheme may in the, in, in, indicate how uh, frequently or <clears throat> how much the injection type of each uh, uh, part. So the disposal uh, comprises uh, the second order of the, of the injections, while the single will trace test just to contain a small amount, but the majority of the injection water is being utilized as a secondary recovery mechanism. And this water injection that is, is used as a secondary recovery mechanism either to be internal water injection or external water injection. The internal water injection is what most of us call it as a water flooding. So now the water flooding is the same, inter, is, is same water injection, but just the water flooding is internally or internally, it means here in, inside the oil reservoir or closer to the oil bank. So simply, Inside the reservoir uh, bank, we nominate it as a uh, water flooding. While the external water injection, that is, we are injecting the water outside uh, or at outside the border of the oil bank, it means or it called it as an external water injection. So again, the water flooding is a water injection, but on a, a simple or a specific form of the injection of water. So. The external water injection, just we are injecting uh, or placing a disposal or a water injection well in the deep aquifer, very far from the oil water contact and uh, outside the oil bank or the oil reservoir. And sometimes some people would merge between the disposal well and the external water injection. So they can utilize the injected water to be. Uh, uh, injecting in the same uh, aquifer of, uh, this, or the same formation, but in the aquifer, not in the reservoir part. At that time, we are utilizing a disposing of the water and at the same time, uh, recovery or increasing the recovery of the oil as uh, in, in employing this disposal water as one of the secondary recovery mechanisms. The Internal water injection has also a different classes and the different schemes, starting from the peripheral or central water injection. At that time, we are placing the injector well at the oil water contact, either below the oil water contact or just above the oil water contact. So the placing of the peripheral uh, water injections is just at the vicinity of the oil water contact and is a basic differences between the external water injection and the internal uh, water or peripheral water injection. And that's what we are gonna to address later. Or in some time we can use it as a central uh, water injections where we are placing the injection at the central or in the top side of the reservoir. And we are gonna to uh, discuss uh, uh, in details each kind of uh, regime. But anyway, this form of the peripheral or central water injection, we are grouping the injection well or injection line on a particular uh, confined area and a particular uh, specific area where the justice are grouping either at the bottom part of uh, the oil reservoir at the contact or in the upper structure side of the reservoir. The second uh, form is similar to the peripheral water injection is crystal and basal uh, injection, where we are placing the water injection at the oil water contact, but at that time, we are replacing the injection wells that are, or that may be used in the central, uh, from a, being a water uh, wells to be a gas injection wells. So simply, we either utilize a peripheral water injection or central water injection, but the basal and Crystal water injection pattern is employing the two methods, but just replacing the top side or uh, the upper structure injections to be a gas injection rather than being a water injection. A third uh, pattern or a third class of the water injection is the irregular injection pattern. And some people would nominate it as a dispersed injection where 
there is irregular or there is no a, a systematic pattern of placing the injection well either to be on the bottom or in the top side or in the middle or between the producer wells. So there is no tracing on how frequent and how uh, the distance between the injector to producer bears is not uh, pretty defined and uh, not clear. The fourth uh, way or the fourth method or uh, fourth arrangement of the injections is uh, what we call it a repeating injection spot pattern, where we have a systematic uh, arrangement and the align alignment of the injector to the producer. So either it's uh, a direct uh, our uh, injector to producer bear, which we call it a radial form or four spot. So at that time we have a four wells, the injector well has to be in the middle in all of the classes and the producer well are surrounding around. The five spot, we have a five well producer and four, uh, one injector, sorry, and four producer. Here, seven spot and injector and six producer uh, revolving around the injection. Same for direct line and distract line uh, and uh, nine spot uh, pattern. So each kind of uh, injection pattern has is this specific uh, advantage or a disadvantage or it's specific benefits that you can get and the drawback uh, that you should uh, work around to minimize its uh, negative impact. Uh, and that what we all as a reservoir engineer have to determine which best uh, uh, injection pattern we should follow. And that's what will be mainly our uh, main uh, discussion and our the heart or the core of our uh, uh, fortiful uh, speech of today. So what the objective of water flooding? So now you know uh, what is the differences between water flooding and water injection. So uh, basically there is no uh, big differences or a uh, huge differences. Water flooding is the same water injection. So startingly it's uh, just to maintain the reservoir pressure above, above the bubble point. So at that time we are keeping the gases in solution or soluble in the oil and at the same time we get the benefit of, of minimizing the oil viscosity since such amount of gases are dissolved in the oil. And the reason behind that, for a traditional, uh, typical form of um, reservoirs that undergoing or uh, the reservoirs that is being performing with the depletion drive mechanism, we have the oil production that is starting from that uh, curve and this is the GUR and here in the reservoir pressure. You, the reservoir is a start initially with an uh, original reservoir pressure and with the course of the production we got in uh, like a deterioration in the reservoir pressure and the decline of the reservoir pressure owing to the absence of the uh, strong or effective water uh, drive mechanism. So at that time the oil is being uh, produced and the relation between the pressure and the oil production is uh, quite uh, linear. So the cumulative oil, once we are depleting or producing from the oil bank, the pressure that existing in the reservoir is directly proportional to the amount of the oil in the reservoir. So once we are producing an oil, we are getting a depletion till we reach to the bubble point of pressure. And that is the problem that in some times the gas uh, is being liberated and produced directly to the producer wells and the liberated solution gases would uh, reduce firstly the stiffness of the reservoir pressure, but at the same time we are getting a drastic decline in the oil production since the gas has much more uh, mobility over the oil, so it being moved quickly and uh, greatly to the toward the producer well, and we may notice, or in some most of the cases we notice, an uh, uh, a sharpening rise in the GUR, then a decline again, and the field is being died, and uh, that uh, moment where we achieved just a little from what we are discovered. So the original form we are just producing an oil in that part, which has. Uh, before our above the bubble point with the interception of the bubble point or falling below the bubble point we have the chance to produce some more much gases with uh, a less uh, recoverable uh, oil rate and uh, recoverable oil reserves at the end but in some 
particular cases, but it's not uh, usual, we may form a secondary cascade where if we have uh, a, deb- uh, and a highly inclined reservoir with a gravity segregation, we would, the gases will move in the upper structure rather than being moved toward the producer wells. So at that time, we will have some sufficient energy and less gas productions that allowing for a little bit much uh, or a, li- a little uh, increase in the oil production over uh, the normal uh, depletion drive or the normal uh, ex- ex- uh, depletion drive mechanism. So there is another form or classes where you have a dome or uh, an anticlines, uh, a secret reservoir that uh, this kind of form of the gas uh, cap would also help the oil uh, to push it uh, toward the producer well and minimize the uh, depletion of the reservoir. So this chart just to demonstrate how will be the case if you have a solution gas drive mechanism is the case that we just uh, reviewed now and uh, where if you have some uh, gas drive and we able to form a, a, a secondary gas cap that would help to produce uh, a more amount of oil and the less pressure uh, decline. So this uh, chart is just how much cumulative oil you get versus the depletion uh, percent of room is a reservoir. So starting here, that is the initial pressure. The decline, firstly, the recovery uh, or the amount of recoverable oil just maximum 20%. While the gas uh, cab, of, in case of we succeeded to form a second gas cab, we would, we would get uh, a little bit higher uh, recoverable reserve, about 30%. Of course, as a water drive would uh, imply a, a much higher sig- or a much significant uh, amount of recoverable oil over the uh, gas drive or the solution gas drive. But in, 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 in most of the cases, uh, we cannot control on the ha- to, to form or to create uh, this secondary gas cap because in, in, in it's required in, in many cases uh, non-made uh, uh, conditions. Or it's, I mean, it's a function also in the reservoir characteristics and the structure of the, yeah, the formation of the reservoir that we are dealing with. And there are some factors that you cannot change. It's, it's a fix. It's, it is a nature that uh, the reservoir is being created on. So the, the chances of increasing the secondary gas cab, if you have a vertical permeability, if you have a, some higher vertical permeability, this will allow for forming the gas cab. If you don't, so you should not expect to have a gas cab. And at that time, most of the gases will be produced. A sick height of reservoir. If your reservoir is sick, so at that time you may have a chance for getting a, and a gas cap. If you don't have a, a sick reservoir, you will uh, most pro- most probably more, the gases will be flowed with the oil. The density contrast. If you have an, uh, the difference between the gas uh, density and the oil density, also play a role on forming the gas cap. Down structure perforation wells, if your uh, perforation are in the middle of the reservoir or in the bottom uh, side of the reservoir, so at that time, the gas that will be created will not be flowed directly into the uh, perforation, so you have the chance to create secondary gas cap. But if you don't have any of them or all of them, at that, or all of them so at that time, uh, most probably, you will follow the green curve where you have a less recoverable oil, and at the same time, uh, you have a, a decline in the, uh, in the reservoir pressure that would not able you to reduce sufficiently in an economical way. So this is the most important uh, uh, benefit or outcomes that we would get from the water flooding is we have to minimize it above the bubble point of pressure. So keeping it above the bubble point of pressure would uh, enable us to override or to bypass and to uh, ignore uh, all of the problems that is related by the presence of the gases in your reservoir. So, again, that what uh, the main uh, uh, outcomes that we can get is to maintain the reservoir pressure above the bubble point. Another uh, benefit that we could get from the water flooding or water injection now you know that they are the same, is a physical displacement of the oil by the water. And at that time, the water is uh, 
providing like a viscous force to the oil to be pushed to the producer wells. So the water displays the oil by pushing it toward the producer. Uh, this, uh, and, and you know, the, the one of the driving mechanisms, the driving mechanism of the oil is by expansion. So once the uh, oil fields, there is some pressure sink uh, point. So the, all of the reservoir will expand. So it will expand directly from the oil uh, around the well bore and then the, uh, the wave of the pressure propagation and the pressure the, the fluid expansion of the oil will move outward accordingly so at that time most of the oil reservoir is being subjected to the expansion still reach to the steady state and uh, reach to the boundary or to the steady state at that time so once it moved or reached to the boundary and the beginning or the start of uh, the Sudest steady state, the oil droplets itself will move towards the producer well according to what we call a viscous uh, force. So the movement of the oil droplet will move through the reservoir towards the producer well. And this kind of uh, approach is, uh, is not co considered in the gas reservoir, where the, all of uh, the gases reservoir are being undergo or reduced uh, with the uh, expansion uh, driving mechanism and with the expansion force. But uh, the viscous force is not existing in the gas reservoir, but it's uh, highly uh, possible or most likely are existing in the oil. So the oil is being produced by expansion and by the viscous forces that is enable, according to the pressure differences, to mobilize our oil droplets from uh, the boundary or from everywhere from in the reservoir towards the producer or towards the pressure sink area where the well is being uh, located. The water now is being driving or assist in this physical uh, push or physical forces to assist the oil to be mobilized faster towards the producer well. So that's what meant by uh, applying a physical uh, displacement or a physical force. At the same time, or uh, one of these kind of physical displacement uh, is just to, to balance what we call it a voidish replacement uh, ratio. So uh, a voidish replacement ratio is simply how much uh, uh, we are injecting over what we are producing. And uh, this is, for example, a reservoir, a real example from a, a field of uh, practical cases. The production is being uh, plotted here on the red curve, while the reservoir pressure, or the, uh, that is the withdrawal rate, or uh, the production rate, and this is the pressure static of each well, because the reservoir has uh, several wells, about uh, 20 or 30 wells are producing from this reservoir, so that is the static pressure or shutting pressure of each well. And the start of the water injection is starting at the uh, late, or the, in the beginning of uh, 99, so this uh, represents the blue uh, line, the injection rate. So on this uh, particular example, the injection, they are injecting around 13,000 per day, while the production rate, of course, it is going up and increasing uh, greatly. And obviously, according to the start of the injection and the physical forces that we are seeing, in addition to the rise up of the reservoir pressure. But what is the uh, we want to illustrate uh, from the void replacement ratio. Here, the injection is about 12,000, and the production rate was 4,000, and is moving up. So it's about reached and peaked about 8,000 barrel a day. So at that time, the void ratio is how much we are injecting over what we are producing. So we are injecting now about four times what we are producing. So the void replacement ratio is basically a around four and but it's being changing uh, significantly with the time owing to a right increase in the production rate that comes from the rise up in the reservoir pressure that was a result also from the injection so the withdrawal issue is being closer to one where we are injecting like or at same rate that what we are producing then the injection rate has rise up again 
while the production rate decreased, this is might be due to a problem of the scale and uh, one of the things that may uh, or uh, occasionally occur in the uh, injection uh, or in the water flooding projects that you may introduce scaling in the reservoir uh, in the reservoir and uh, it, it impact negatively on the producer well. So the production has decreased and that's the result of increase in the reservoir pressure. So they decreased uh, again the water injection in order to uh, balance and to keep the voidage ratio closer to one and the well or the reservoir started to gain some productions and the reservoir pressure kept constant as long as you are keeping the injection rate closer to the production rate. The injection uh, has increased again, and while the production kept constant, so this offered a greater voltage ratio that uh, was about uh, the double. So we are injecting about 15K while we are producing eight, eight and a half. So the withdrawal ratio or voltage ratio is two. But now there is a problem with an aggressive development uh, was applied to that field and they increased the number of uh, producer wells. So that caused it to the voidage ratio to be reverted and it become less than one. And that what caused the reservoir pressure to decline. So from this kind of uh, relations or this uh, a practical field application, you would find that is that the reservoir pressure is being declined. Once the voltage ratio is greater than one, or what we are saying, what we are injecting is more than what we are producing, this will cause a rise up in the reservoir pressure. Once they become equalized, it should be the reservoir pressure come like a constant. Once the gap increased again, it, it rise up and it decline or the reservoir pressure is going uh, in a decrease uh, performance is in case of what we are producing is uh, over what we are injecting. So at that time, the voidage ratio is less than one. So one of the uh, important uh, point uh, that we should highlight that is you have to keep your eyes on the voidage replacement ratio and the average of the vibration in order to optimize the injection or the flooding that you are introducing into your field. So. And again, just the voidage replacement ratio, uh, just as I mentioned, it can be called uh, injection with the row ratio. It provides an account of reservoir barrel into and out of the reservoir. So it's being calculated. All of uh, the calculation of the reservoir volume or reservoir rate has to be on the uh, reservoir condition basis. So we are how much we are injecting into the reservoir and how we are producing. So just simply the injected uh, the beta water or formation volume factor for the water times the water injection rate. This over the uh, produced oil plus the produced water also at the reservoir condition. So the v, uh, voidage replacement ratio is used as a leading indicator to orient the water flooding to achieve the target of the reservoir pressure. As just we were saying, if you need to rise up the reservoir pressure, you have to keep your voidage replacement ratio more over the one. If you have to to stabilize the reservoir pressure, you have to keep it one. So, for example, here, uh, an instantaneous uh, voidage replacement ratio, uh, that is a historical one over the date. From that time, they started injection, and, and this is also in a particular example from uh, another field. And they were trying to uh, neutralize or to equalize the voidage replacement ratio over the one. And then sometimes, it, uh, this factor can be controlled in uh, according to a particular situation and then sometimes it may be out of your hand. So for example, if you have a damage in your reservoir and your reservoir has declined greatly, so at that time uh, you cannot increase your uh, production of take, so you have to go to the producer well and to reclaim or to solve the illness of this well. So that's what causes the void replacement ratio increase too. And sometimes the opposite is happened. You get a uh, deterioration in the injectivity and uh, a, a, a damage in the injection profile. So you may get a uh, problem in the injection. So that's what causes the uh, uh, voidage ratio to fall uh, below the one. So I mean here, you may get also a leakage or a problems in the pipeline or in the whirlpool itself. So 
uh, there's some external uh, circumstances that is, uh, may also influence on the voidage abrasment ratio. But you have to keep, as we are saying, you have to keep your eyes open on this chart along with the reservoir pressure. Also, it's worth to highlight that is, uh, this kind of uh, parameter is uh, uh, widely, or some people would utilize it with a uh, uh, Jordan blot, so it can be measured with a vo Jordan blot, and Jordan blot is uh, simply, you are drawing the cumulative water injections versus the cumulative produced injections. So the red one is the liquid and the oil. Some people would prefer to uh, draw the same. And by having this line, a straight line that has a unit slope, so it means that what we are, is, is, this represents a voidage ratio of one. So now, if you are injecting more, uh, more than producing, you have uh, the curve blues is uh, uh, unit slope line. If you have uh, the injection uh, less than what uh, you are produced at that time, it will uh, stay over the line. So this can provide a guideline uh, whether, whether your voidage abrasion ratio is aligned to the unity. And uh, again, this kind of a chart or this kind of uh, parameter has to be uh, used in conjunction with the uh, reservoir pressure or average reservoir pressure, the historical reservoir pressure record. A typical oil reservoir life cycle, as we just were explaining in the aerial style is slides, we are undergoing the primary uh, driving uh, mechanism or the primary uh, cycle of the productions, and uh, the recovery factor is being flattening over the time. This represents the cost uh, of the uh, field or the running cost of the field. You would find here an rise up in the cost according to the CAPEX. You are establishing the field and uh, promoting the development strategies, which is in the primary stage. Then just all uh, kept for uh, the most of the time is just the operating cost. At the same time, you get uh, some uh, less oil that is being produced from the earlier time or initial time of the field. So you get, you got, uh, some uh, a less steep recovery and uh, less oil uh, production rate from the initial time. Once you start the injection or the water flooding or water injection, or what we nominated as a secondary driving uh, mechanism, we get a second or a flash of uh, the production. So you get a uh, rise up in the recovery factor and the recoverable reserves by the time, and but it's uh, later being flattened again and uh, closer to flat due to the, you recovered uh, uh, most of the productions from uh, the first time of the uh, recovery uh, of the water injection. The cost is the same, this is the call, uh, represents the CAPEX and this represents the OBEX. So you would find a wide range of the uh, of the cost and along a wide range uh, and a huge vari variety in the in the outcomes. I mean here in the recovery factor. So our target now or our main task is to achieve the greatest recovery factor, not performing our uh, uh, reservoir on, on, on the middle, for example, or maybe we didn't get uh, an, 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 a big differences or a big uh, recoverable oil. So uh, at that time, it's uh, very important to work uh, regularly and continuously in order to achieve the maximum and the ultimate uh, benefits and to get the best use of applying the water injection. At the same time, you have to optimize it by reducing the cost as low as you can. There's also another illustration where we are starting with the primary and that is a recoverable oil, the secondary or water flooding. As we were saying, it has a huge range, so it may follow this trend or it may be follow the peak where you can get uh, an efficient water or secondary recovery. The same for the tertiary uh, oil recovery or enhanced oil recovery. You would find here the primary is like a confident uh, narrow or in a narrow and the confident range or a, a little bit smaller range. The enhanced oil recovery comes second, but the third type or the third uh, range from the uncertainty or that uh, bosses the huge uh, variety and the result is the water flooding. That makes it vary from field to another 
and the efficiency and what we can say uh, the gain that we can get from the water flooding may differ from uh, a well to a reservoir to a reservoir and from a field to a field owing to some characteristics that is inherently in the reservoir and some things that is related to the operator and the engineers are uh, uh, designing and are planning for this field. So what, why do water floods fall below expectation? Simply, we have these statistics that uh, is a uh, uh, very famous and uh, published uh, uh, result in, uh, I think, Oil and Gas Journal that showing up that 45% comes due to the high expenses, while 45 is comes due to the poor sweep efficiency, and 10% comes due to the poor design, or resulted from the poor design. So the 10% of the poor design uh, involve uh, or include the insufficient oil saturation for oil banking, where if you started your water injection at uh, the late time or below the bubble point at that time, you would not able to get uh, a better result unless you uh, or uh, in, uh, you, you may not got a good result uh, over the if you are comparable with a field that or, or, or in the same field if you would start it earlier than uh, hitting the bubble point. So the sufficient oil saturation is a. a tremendous uh, factor here. So how much oil or SO is being uh, kept or being uh, remaining in the reservoir? Is there some amount of gases or not? Insufficient water injection due to the loss of the injection in the aquifer. And sometime you may not able to inject all of uh, the, or may not orient all of the injected water toward the oil bank or the producer oil. In many cases, uh, and it's a very there are many famous examples that some of them are gonna to explain it later. Uh, you can lose uh, and the low, uh, you, know, you can lose some of the amount of the water either in the faultless or either in the uh, undesirable uh, locations. Uh, that is not uh, linked to the driving mechanism of the water injection. The point is we are going to address it uh, precisely. So another part uh, or another element is that uh, uh, result or lead for a poor uh, design is a high oil viscosity. This is something that you can not work uh, uh, on it or over it because this is related to your reservoir, but the only thing that you can do is to avoid hitting the oil or start hitting the reservoir pressure below the bubble point or hitting the, uh, or seeing the first gas, bubbles of gases. So increasing uh, the, uh, the, the reservoir pressure over a particular uh, limit is a danger and at the same time leaving the reservoir pressure the loser bubble point is danger because if you know the viscosity of uh, the viscosity of the oil uh, across the reservoir pressure, you would find that is the lowest value of oil viscosity just above the bubble point pressure. So if you started your injection water injection in a very earlier time, let's say just uh, to lose the initial pressure, you would apply the water injection in a higher oil viscosity. But if you would leave the reservoir pressure to fall just above the bubble point pressure at that time, you would have the lowest and the least oil viscosity. So this will be a beneficial and, the, a, and a, a bonus for your side that you are displacing the oil or the water that is being uh, injected. Find out a uh, less viscous fluid. So this will be, uh, or this will lead to a greater uh, recovery. Also, there is, you may choose an incompatible water that can lead to a scaling or uh, uh, lead to souring your reservoir by introducing a bacteria and so on. Those things, most of them, comes due to the, uh, the design that is the reservoir engineer uh, doing or exercising in his uh, uh, routine work. So once they uh, decide the water injections, you should choose the optimum 
and the best and the conditions that can succeed or lead to a successful water injection. So the poor sweep efficiency also that comes from some of them are uh, man-made and some of them is out of our hands. And this comes due to the presence of the fracture or a hypermesteric. And if you have a, some, a degree of reservoir anisotropy, if you have a large permeability contrast between the layers, a high vertical permeability, so this also lead to uh, water cooling and the problems of uh, losing the efficiency of water in, uh, injections. In some particular cases, uh, you may drive the oil towards the gas cap and lose uh, some of the uh, oil volumes by uh, applying the water injection in a wrong way. Uh, water filling due to unfavorable mobility ratio. So, you can have some control on uh, some of those uh, problems or uh, issues, and you may not have a full control on them. But what you can do at that time, you can just try to do your best in order to override as much as you can uh, and bypass or work around the uh, heterogeneous nature of your reservoir. And that's also what we are going to address it uh, in detail. A higher uh, cost or a higher uh, than expected expenses. So the expenditures that you are spending in, uh, in the water injection may also uh, increase dramatically and uh, you may not account for a particular problems. Uh, for example, uh, the production problem due to comes of scale and emulsion and occlusion, you have to consider uh, a good uh, chemistry department that will be uh, like how, and how I can say uh, carefully uh, or have an agreed competency levels that can deal with uh, generated problems the newly generated problems that comes from the water injections so if you don't have the, a good uh, staff that can uh, have the awareness and the knowledge to deal with the scale and the emulsion and the crucian, you would lose uh, much of your assets at that time, uh, losing the benefit of the water injection and uh, you're, you're not going to achieve the uh, net present value and you will ex spend a much money uh, than you uh, designed it for. Injecting problems due to the blogging and the channeling and also things may lead also to a frequent workover. So you have to take care or consider that is in, uh, in either a near future or late future, you may uh, work over the injection well in order to solve the illness and the problems that is may result from the water injection. Extensive well workovers. As if the people, if you are going to plan a water injection, you have to understand that is uh, to rent a, 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 not not a permanent but a, a free a work over exit can use the in an easy way or in an easy manner uh, that comes from the scaling that would impact on the producer will as well. Uh, the higher amount of water that can cause an, uh, a water blockage or a, a high water production that requires a water shut off. So you need to work over the well in order to optimize the oil production. So if you started your water injection project and you don't consider in the future or in a, on, a, on, a some, on a some way you don't uh, put in your budget that you may use and a work over, that might be a problem because you may find that most half of your wells are watered out or has a water production that require uh, a water shut off and um, a water control. So at that time, you may uh, lose uh, more of your oil and uh, lose, uh, lose some of the production that uh, you should be produced in case of you have an work over that uh, uh, readily uh, at any time. Equipment failure due to the corrosion and that uh, and a very uh, well-known problems uh, that can be resulted from the uh, presence of high water or the saline water. So under design the injection on production, some people design their production facility on a particular rate that designed for oil, but once they are injecting water and they received more water, the facility has a uh, limited uh, capacity size, so they cannot perform very well. So they may uh, rent another uh, 
plan to run another scheme of uh, handling the produced oil and water, or they go for the easier solution, which is they are choking the big the uh, wells. So we are commencing the water injection and we are introducing the water injection and water flooding in order to increase the productivity and the production rate of the wells. But uh, if you don't have this kind of uh, a large capacity of the water injection or, and the production facility, you may, the, the day is it come and you find yourself uh, reinforced to close or shut some wells because you don't have uh, enough space and enough storage for the, uh, for the produced fluid to be handled and to be stored, uh, it will be almost likely uh, the case. A maturity by chart during a water flooding. So starting to look for uh, various categories of uh, oil and uh, volumes within a typical oil field subject to a water flooding, you may find uh, uh, or we may uh, form this uh, by chart. And this by chart uh, effectively just explain how much is the residual oil and how much is the produced uh, oil and how much is the reserves and unrecoverable oil. So. The first part is the cumulative oil, that the oil that you already uh, took from your reservoir after either the primary and the secondary. And, and this way chart is just after starting the secondary uh, recovery mechanism or the water injection or water flooding. So it's a maturity chart during the water flooding. So this is the oil that you already produced from your field, either from primary or secondary. This is the reserve or the remaining reserve that uh, yet to come. So sooner or later, it's, uh, um, it will be in your pocket. And the third one is the residual oil saturation. And this component or part of oil remain stationary and trapped within the pores uh, after the sweep of the water and trapped by the capillarity. So it is uh, immobile easily and requires an extensive method and, and a huge effort to, to make it flow. So this is the residual oil that represents about 25 percent of the oil in place. So if you have a saturation uh, or the overall saturation, it may be 20 or uh, 15 percent if you have uh, a 20 percent initial water saturation. So again, this is a percentage of the oil in place. So the unrecoverable oil, and that is uh, the last category, which is it's uh, uncovered mobile oil. So this is a mobile oil. This mobile oil should be moved and should be uh, flowed uh, easily, but uh, there is some problem for it, and you cannot produce it. Then this part of movable oil can be recovered by either primary or secondary, but unfortunately is left behind at the end of life of the field. And essentially, it is needed to improve the recovery. If you need to improve the recovery of the field, then this category, where the oil uh, normally will come from. So th this part is a part that we want to uh, tackle the problem of it and to understand why we couldn't able to produce it in originally and how where it is existing in lower reservoir in order to punch it, to get it, that bypass the oil, and to find the suitable, the suitable way to get it back into our pockets. And at the same time, it is important and it is uh, uh, mandatory and in order to design your water flooding in order to minimize this amount and this volume of the oil. So 47%, it should be produced and you should get it back. But unfortunately, you not get it back. Adding to the 25, this represents about 70% of the oil in place is left behind. And what we can get after even the drive, uh, the secondary driving mechanism, water injection, can be just 30%. So this part is our main topic of our discussion, our, our, our ongoing discussion, how to minimize or uh, to get as much as we can from that part and how to find the suitable way to override the problems that uh, generate leaving this huge amount of oil that represent uh, closer to the half of the oil that uh, in the in Belize. Uh, 
So return back to the well arrangement of flooding pattern, if you remember, where we were seeing that is a water injection scheme, external and internal, and the type of the internal are peripheral or central water injection and the irregular pattern, or what we call it dispersed, and the crystal basal injection and repeating pattern. Now we are going, we are going to uh, explain the feature of each uh, uh, method and the each pattern uh, and the each class of them. So the external injection, it's simple. You, you are injecting in the aquifer, very far from the oil water contact, and uh, much deeper than the oil water contact and from the producer well as well. So you have a long distance uh, from the producer well to uh, inject, like what is being uh, illustrating in this structure map. It must be very far from the producer well, and is not necessary to cover the oil reservoir from all directions. So just to spot one or two uh, wells over the full reservoir is uh, enough. It requires less number of injection well indeed. Um, you can inject even above the fracture pressure. There is no worries about uh, that particular issues because there is uh, there will not be uh, a problem of uh, having the, uh, an inadequate uh, performance that result from injecting in uh, a fracture mood because uh, due to the fact that those injection wells are uh, very far enough from the producer well. So she should not be a problem at all about the fracture pressure. The main objective of this uh, type or this uh, class of the uh, injection pattern is to boost the aquifer and to increase the strength of the water encroachment for higher production of ticks. So this is used for uh, if you have an, uh, a moderate aquifer uh, or your aquifer is uh, good enough, but you are producing with a very high rate that is the aquifer cannot uh, support and cannot be aligned with the production of tick at that time you are injecting in order to increase the strength and the efficiency of the aquifer. But the problem of this application that is, is uh, used in a widely extended uh, lease or in a big area. If you have in a big area and uh, you, you have enough space to place those injection wells, it's okay, no problems. But in sometimes your lease might be restricted and uh, in a very confined area. So you don't have uh, much uh, distance or uh, that luxury to place your uh, external uh, injection well uh, in, a, a ver in a very far uh, positions and in a very deep um, uh, structuring than the oil water contact. Also, this application may require the, uh, an, uh, a very long water pipeline that uh, transverses uh, injected water into the injector wells. And this poses some like a kind of uh, cost in, uh, but uh, at the same time, it, uh, it has some uh, benefits that comes from a less number of injection well. So the peripheral or central flooding, in case of you don't have this kind of uh, a big aquifer or a, a big space to drill uh, the external water injection, there is some uh, peripheral uh, flooding you are placing the injector uh, wells closer to the oil water contact, as uh, just we mentioned, either just above or below. So closer to the, at the vicinity or proximity of the contact, you are displacing this kind of, uh, of oil towards the producer well. And in case of you have an edge water, so you have like doing it on a, like a war, so you have an, uh, this uh, inclined uh, reservoir, uh, have, uh, you have uh, a deep uh, formation that allow you to place the injections, lose just the oil water contact and produce uh, from the wells that are uh, positions in higher and higher structures. It has an assumption like a kind of rose at that time, the first row or the first uh, producer wells that are closer to the oil water contact and uh, by definition, uh, it's closer to the injector wells, will get watered out quickly and then comes the second row, third row and so on. So you have to expect it to uh, move gradually your injection uh, lines according to the fact that is uh, water injection is being raised up gradually with uh, 
course uh, of the injections. And sometimes you may place the injector wells in the top structure. If you form it, some like a gas, and this gas uh, will possess a potential uh, or possess a potential problem in your recovery and adverse the recovery system. So at that time, some people would think this to inject uh, a water on the uh, on the gas cap or closer to the gas cap. And uh, at that time, you are uh, avoiding the or you are avoiding the growth of the gas cap and the development of the gas cap, and at the same time pushing the oil toward the producer well. So up dip and down dip injection is can be combined in, uh, in most of the oil produced, and this is due to the fact that is the water near uh, the injection well or the production well near the injection will get uh, decreased, increase in the pressure support, while the wells that are placed in the upper structure may have, uh, in, ca in case of, for example, this application, in case of the, you are commencing the water injection and your inject uh, producer well are far from the producer well, this may create an, a gas cap, and that gas cap can reduce the production of those wells and the gas can find its way to gas the out the oil well are locating on the upper side, so at that time you will lose some oil. And same problem will happen that is when you are ch the water uh, uh, chasing the oil can drive some of the oil volume into the gas cap, and that will be another problem where that oil will be trapped due to the capillarity and will not be movable at all. So at that time, some our uh, there are a few indeed, a few operators uh, thought that uh, this can lead to uh, some result. Of course, it has to be studied very carefully because the water may be fingered out into the producer well. Uh, so if your model or your study showed up that uh, this kind of central flooding were add value, so you can go ahead and without any problems and you can recover uh, an oil or much oil uh, than if you left with the uh, peripheral flood. So, easier to use a, a peripheral injection or a central injection. They have uh, the same concept of uh, placing the group of oil on a particular place, either in the bottom of your reservoir or in the crest side of your reservoir. Some people uh, or some application would think uh, differently, saying, okay, let's inject water in the water injection uh, or in the aquifer or in the water uh, region, and let's inject gases in the gas region and uh, utilize a combination of gas injection and water injection. So rather than injecting water at that time, they think, okay, let's inject gases and drive that gases or gas cap to work intentionally to push the oil down. So this is like the initial time and uh, four years later, you may have this scheme. So you gained uh, some uh, an incremental oil owing to the gas injection. This can happen on the inclined reservoir or edge water, where there is some edge water aquifer or which edge water encroachment, or in the domal structure where you have an anticline so you can get uh, anti sick reservoir, so you can inject the gases and the gas can push the oil down and so while the water can push the oil upward. In fact, the, uh, this is not a uh, common because uh, it has some change because some people wouldn't have this luxury to inject the gases and to have a gas, a gas plant and gas injection scheme along with the water injection, maybe uh, economically, uh, not double uh, and might be you don't have such sufficient gas injection uh, because that gas is uh, what the gas is being separated from the oil but what happened if some water would flow to the oil uh, producer so the, to the oil this is the injector of uh, the water and that is a producer oil so if case of some water would flow to the oil and uh, leaving some oil and some uh, gases in turn to be uh, recovered. So at that time, we don't have such sufficient gases to be injection here. So they, uh, a, a very caution they should be uh, 
taking into account in designing and operating uh, your field on this injection pattern. So the peripheral or central injection when you are injecting in the aquifer or in the center uh, would not achieve in, uh, in some circumstances and some situation uh, the, what you were looking for and what you are seeking for. Due to the fact, for example, the central injection can lead to this channeling and due to the gravity uh, of the water would uh, move uh, quickly to the producer well. And even for the peripheral water injection, you would require much more injection of water in order to support the oils that the very the oil part and the oil producer wells that are very that are very far from the injection nodes. So this would lead to this kind of it, um, it channeling and fingering, and at the same time, this would introduce many of bypassed oil, and that's what we were. Um, uh, referred to the 47% unrecoverable mobile oil. So this kind of oil will keep unrecoverable and this belongs to the 47%. So that why some people think about to choose a repeated regular injection pattern or injection spot. So there are the classes and types of the injection pattern. They are repeated and they have some regular uh, placement. Uh, that one is uh, required uh, an uh, extensive work of the planning and design and calculations, but at the same time, it can lead uh, an effective result in a sooner time. You may have a uh, two spot, just an injector well and a producer well, and just you are moving on uh, a radial uh, flow here. So what we call it, injector to producer beer. Or three spot, you have an injector and two producer from the two directions. Or four spot and the five spot, you have five wells. Uh, the producer well are located in the center while the injection are uh, revolving and uh, moving around the producer wells. The same it here uh, for seven spot and uh, inverted seven spots. There's some inversion from uh, seven spot and the five spot and the nine spots have a normal and inverted as well just to are replacing the injector by the producer ar arrangement. The direct line where you are having this kind of rows, so a particular set of injector well are just designed to place in front of the producer well, while another injection well is being uh, designed for another set of producer well. And again, this is like an internal injection inside the oil bank. As we and the above oil water contact might be some of the wells are just blue or at the oil water contact, but again, those injections are you are spotting the injections in the oil bank or a staggered line injection. Just you, it's same as the direct line, but have some offset. Uh, there is. One of the things that uh, should be underlined that is the injectivity or the injection rate has it for each uh, injection uh, wells has its own specific uh, equations that uh, should be used because some people would confuse and utilize the injectivity index and the injection rate to uh, estimate or to design the injection uh, profile. Uh, on a wrong equation. So that one is the famous one. It just used for the two spot. The five spot has its own equations, the same for seven and the direct lines and nine. Each one has its own specific uh, flow dynamics and the configuration of the flow movement that should require uh, a precise determination of uh, the true injective, uh, injectivity index and the injectivity correlation that represent the uh, scheme of the uh, injector to the producer to the producer arrangement. So again, I want to emphasize that is you have to choose the proper equation that is designed for each scheme and for each battery. So the repeated uh, regular injection spot. Uh, what is the difference is between uh, the, the normal and the inverted one and between each of those uh, application or these schemes of uh, pattern. 
Of course, it's a direct line, as we were saying, as a particular uh, set of injector with a particular uh, set of the producer well. So the, it has a production to injection ratio one to one. Each producer had, has an, has an uh, each of the producer well has a uh, particular injection well having the same uh, equity uh, of number of wells. The injection rate is a different uh, story. The injection rate, as we were uh, explaining in the earlier part, is governed by the voidage replacement ratio. So you have to differentiate between injection rate and the injection uh, uh, the injection rate and the production rate, which is is being uh, uh, authorized, or I mean, uh, and evaluated by the voidage replacement ratio, and the injection pattern. The injection pattern just uh, take the concern of uh, how many wells uh, are injecting and uh, how many producer wells are being uh, drilled and placed. The staggered injection pattern is the same amount of uh, ratio between producer to injector, but just as we were seeing, have a, a, a kind of uh, Offsetting between is, is not a strictly uh, direct uh, or straightforward uh, opposite to the producer well. There is some a small offset and shift in the array. The four spot, uh, sorry, the five spot has uh, the same issue. The five spot, the regular one, we are uh, placing the producer well and the injector well are uh, revolving around the producer well. The inverted one is the opposite. You are just placing the injector well and place the producer well around the injector well. So the injection comes outward. Here the injection directions come uh, in, uh, in, uh, inward, not outward, like uh, the inverted type. The seven spot, the regular uh, scheme, has an uh, ratio of one to two. So now, the injection, number of injection is more than the production uh, wells. So the, we are injecting uh, in a wells is much higher than the production by the double in the seven spot, but in the regular array. And while in the inverted arrangement, we have the opposite. You get as a production to injection ratio is two. So here we are producing double the injection unlike the regular or the normal uh, scheme where we are producing half what we are injection in terms of well, not the rate again. The four spot is vicely versed with uh, seven. So the in, in regular is uh, we are producing uh, from double what we are injection in terms of well, while the inverted scheme, we are producing half of what we are injection. So the seven spot inverted scheme is the same uh, 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 as the same strat I mean in the same manner and same number of wells that the four spot but in a regular way offer. So both of them having we are producing double what we are injection and while uh, the inverted, uh, oh, sorry, the in regular seven spot are injection or injecting double what you are producing the same of inverted four spot. Even me, I'm confused and sometimes that you have to uh, get this uh, uh, kind of um, map or uh, key uh, uh, New refer I mean, regularly you have to visit this kind of uh, 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 slide uh, regularly in order to uh, understand what I mean, because you may confuse that. All of, all, most of the reservoir engineer is being confused about regular and inverted and the ratio, but uh, it's very easy uh, to have uh, uh, a material that uh, explaining uh, the efficiency and the uh, describing the system and the pattern arrangement. Nine spot is uh, that is a regular nine spot and that is inverted nine spot. So you have a ratio on the inverted five spot. The production to injection ratio is a three, while the regular nine spot 
is uh, offering the greatest number of injection comparable with the production. Since the ratio is one to three, so we are injecting triple what we are producing in terms of wells. So the placement of the injection well in the nine spot is the greatest number or, in, or offers the greatest intensity of the injectors over the all of regular battery. But when we should utilize uh, either the regular or inverted, simply it, uh, the button used, it's according to the field that has in a particular condition and situation and should be modeled and they should be uh, aligned with the heterogeneity scale and the distribution of the, of the permeability and porosity and so on. And also there is some uh, key factors that you may put in your uh, uh, consideration that uh, and you have to be well and uh, knowing to every few that when the injected fluid moves faster than the displaced fluid, so choose more production well. So when you have a water that has a less viscosity and moving faster than the oil, you have to choose the arrangement and the pattern that offer a production well over the injection well. So in that case is a typical that offering a more production well over the injection well and the opposite applies. So if you are injecting is a less uh, or the water is being moved in the reservoir with uh, less speed than the oil moved toward the producer well, at that time you choose the injection uh, ratio of is much greater than the production uh, ratio or the production wells. So again, the ratio of, uh, of the production to injection well is being controlled by how fast the water is being moved comparable with the oil. Higher mobility ratio or higher water movement, it shows more production and less injection wells. More of the water is moved slowly, you have to choose an, uh, less injection uh, wells, uh, a higher injection wells and less in production wells. So another scheme is the irregular or dispersed injection pattern. Uh, and this you just uh, for a particular reservoir where uh, uh, has its own uh, structure and specific uh, conditions, you may uh, reinforce it to place the injection and the production in a, a, a non-sorting uh, uh, way. Or when if you have some uh, reservoirs that are uh, a small reservoir or marginal reservoir and already has been drilled and there is not economical to drill another uh, wells and uh, to choose a particular pattern, at that time you convert the wells into uh, a non-uniform uh, way and uh, this according to either the well lost its productivity or has a mechanical problem or uh, for a particular reason or a different reason, you reinforce it to uh, choose an uh, injection well in, uh, and uh, you cannot able to uh, define a, a, a particular pattern of the injection, so nothing to do with that case. So this is what uh, generate at the end irregular or dispersed water injection. And by the way, it, it may be helpful because in some reservoirs where there are some fault is and the localized variation in the permeability or either the porosity, uh, the irregular may be helpful at that time. So just you are, uh, of, yani I mean here, uh, you may have a, 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 an isotropic system or a direction permeability. So you are placing the injection well on the way that uh, you are uh, know and, uh, uh, and uh, realize that this is the best way to displace the oil and it, the uh, effective direction of the injection towards the production. So irregular or dispersed injection pattern is also common uh, pattern and scheme for the water injection. You may get a variation in well pattern. So the reservoir may be divided into uh, some part is uh, like a dispersed or uh, irregular pattern while uh, the other part of the reservoir is undergoing a very uh, uh, a peripheral water injection. So you may have a combined uh, pattern. So uh, it's also uh, uh, no problem with this and can be also found in our uh, field applications. So there is some 
a special consideration uh, for choosing or for operating the injection well is fracturing versus symmetric regime. So this is simply you are utilizing the step rate test and generating hull blood. So in order to understand what the kind of injection or what is the mode of the injection, either you are injecting in a matrix or in a fractioning, you have to assess and to understand which kind of regime your water flooding is being operated. So simply, you have to under assess the step rate test, and this can happen the, in the initial time or even later on, no problem. This is conducted by determining the injection pressure above which the formation is being fragged. And simply, is just you have a different injection rates, and you can record the bottom hole pressure or well head. It's better to get the bottom hole flowing pressure. And at the same time, you pick the production rate, or sorry, the injection rate uh, of each step along with the pressure or the lowest uh, pressure or the pressure that was recorded at that injection rate. As in, you can uh, draw this injection rate into the uh, versus the product, the, the injection rate versus the injection pressure. And at that time, you may have two stream and two uh, lines. Of course, the points is being revolving and uh, scattered around uh, those two lines. So one line represents a matrix injection, while the other flat line represents a fracture injection. So at that time, you may get uh, the fracture point is the interception of the fracture line or the flat, the steep, uh, uh, sorry, the, the slow slope line or the high slope line is the interception is the, the definition and the, the, the value that represents a fracturing of the formation. So you, from that test, you can understand or uh, know which uh, is exactly the fracture pressure. Then you have the option either to operate in the matrix, and that's preferred, uh, especially in the internal water injection or the water flooding, or you uh, prefer to inject when above the fracture, and this, uh, as we explained, is uh, no issue that in case of you are operating with external. Uh, I just uh, want to point out that there is a problem in this chart because this chart should be the pressure should grow uh, upward, but I don't know how this kind of chart is uh, uh, going in a decreasing manner, so it has to be in an increasing manner, so it might be the opposite. So I will try to uh, solve on it. Also, there is some one of the examples that you can understand the uh, your fracturing if you are uh, if you if you don't have the tool to <clears throat> to perform or to conduct a stable test, <clears throat> just reviewing so your performance and your injection uh, uh, rate versus the injection pressure. So this is the injection pressure and that is the injection rate. Uh, either the well head or bottom hole. Still, I would prefer to utilize the bottom hole pressure if you have a gauges down. Uh, hole. So you are operating the, uh, you, or you are just uh, uh, obtaining the regular recorded uh, pressure and uh, with the daily water injection and the draw the cumulative injection versus the cumulative pressure. <clears throat> the slope, the straight line slope, indicates the matrix injection. If your uh, line or the injection uh, uh, performance are fracturing or are uh, buzzed beyond the fracture uh, uh, pressure of the formation, so you would have an, a flat performance. It's some closer to the uh, part of the uh, stability test. It's the same analogy. If your reservoir showing up a rise up in the cumulative pressure comparable with the cumulative injection, this indication of uh, a, damage, a damaging is being introduced to the injectivity, and you will have uh, some. Uh, kind of wellbore blocking. There is some uh, also an advantage of having a hull because hull blood is uh, easily to generate even with uh, utilizing the wellhead pressure in case of you have a wellhead pressure records. So 
you can compare with all injector wells are running in your field and uh, just plotting the uh, cumulative injection versus the cumulative production and see and observe which wells are suffering from uh, like uh, uh, a problem of plugging if you it's concave upward or the wells that already uh, show like a fractioning in case of the well is showing a flattening uh, into a horizontal line. It also indicates which well showing an easy or low resistance to injection that has a good injectivity and the well that has a poor injectivity. So most of the injection profile trained on this uh, application does not showing a fracture because uh, I didn't observe here any flattening, but uh, might be there is some kind of plugging is being uh, introduced into the, the injection of uh, those kind of uh, injector wells uh, injecting in a particular field. Now. We just finished this uh, cons uh, consideration uh, of the uh, injection. Now we are moving to a special observation of the production well. In order to, uh, our, it's a, a way that it's uh, essential for any of our engineers that is dealing with the field uh, operating with the water flooding and secondary driving mechanism is to have uh, a comparable a chart and, uh, and, uh, and a comparison uh, platform for which you can estimate the performance of filter injection and the performance of individual wells. One of the crucial charts is just to draw the water cut versus the cumulative oil. And this can generate which well, and you can group the wells that is showing a breakthrough time, irregular breakthrough time, the water cut started in, a, in a, a less or a lower cumulative oil, comparable with the well that is showing uh, a breakthrough time, but with uh, a greater cumulative oil. So the, that well is performing very well, while that well has an, uh, a problem that is uh, uh, indicating uh, a fast uh, breakthrough time. In addition to how much is the progress and the development and the rise up of the water cut. If the well, like the red one, is growing greatly and with an accurate manner, it indicates also uh, the floodability is not going in an effective way, unlike the one that is going with uh, a less steep and uh, less rise up of the uh, water cut performance. So this kind of uh, thing, you can uh, diagnose the problem and the, of your uh, reservoir or the performance of the reservoir that is being uh, undeployed uh, or subjected to a water injection. So you would interfere with the wells that is showing up a huge or great uh, water injection or uh, wa sorry, water cut and water production in order to resolve and to minimize that amount of water. Or at the same time, you have to understand what is the uh, the main reason that is lead to get this irregular breakthrough time in the well. So is there is a problem in the reservoir or the injection pattern you are applying is not adequate with the reservoir you are managing. So, but in case of that is a story why some wells showing a, a good performance in terms of a late breakthrough time. Is this because due to the fact that those wells are far from the injection points? So, I mean, a lot, a many things uh, would be produced from having this kind of a chart that would raise the questions uh, about to, in order to optimize and to manage effectively your water flooding uh, projects. Another kind of plot uh, or uh, uh, a surveillance uh, tool, uh, and most of them are, uh, I mean, a, a basic uh, and uh, readily for uh, available uh, tools so because uh, water cut is uh, one of the daily records uh, that is, is operational uh, or day by day operational uh, step that is being taken and acquired and reported on a daily basis so no problems to uh, get the water cut mm -hmm. and uh, the water or ratio as well so is not a complicated way just you can plot the water log of water oil ratio versus the time as for, versus the cumulative oil sorry so the log of water oil ratio versus the cumulative oil indicate how is the efficiency of the uh, of the driving uh, the water driving mechanism or the water flooding mechanism in case of you are applying a water flooding mechanism that is 
fast and uh, quick uh, log uh, water oil ratio versus a cumulative oil is showing a channeling or a poor aerial, uh, aerial uh, efficiency. So it's, at the end, it's a poor performance. Unlike if you got the shape of the log water oil ratio versus a cumulative oil on that way. Also, one of the benefits that you can uh, attain from having this kind of a chart, if uh, you extrapolate the log water oil ratio, for, for a particular economic limit, let's say most of the people are operating from 10 to 20. So uh, this represents a, a water cut about 90 to 95%. So if you have a water cut about 95%, for example, so you can operate uh, the water ratio on the range of from 20 to 50. So the interception of the water ratio, you will get uh, the cumulative oil. But Again, that must be on a log scale, not in the Cartesian scale. So this is in an example of a real field a real field case where just to extrapolate or predict the water or ratio as a cumulative and the ultimate reserve that would obtain, they choose a water or ratio of eight. So the extrapolation of the line or the projected line of log water oil ratio versus the cumulative oil would produce the ultimate uh, recoverable reserve of the particular uh, economical limit. If you rise up the economical limit, you would uh, obtain a greater reserve. It's according to the circumstances and condition you are operating your field. Another uh, implication of this chart, if you have uh, two trends, so it may indicate you have a layering, so this is a breakthrough time of uh, layer one, while this chart is indicating uh, a breakthrough time of layer two. And uh, this indicates you have uh, or imply uh, the layering effect in your system, so you can easily distinguish or understand whether your reservoir have a learning effect or not by the observing the slope of and the chart and the curve of log oil ratio versus the cumulative oil. So now we are moving to the most important part, how we can optimize our uh, production and to adequately manage our reservoir for to to obtain a successful water project and to lead to a very effective uh, secondary driving mechanism. So the approach is to mobilize the remaining oil, the oil that is being uh, left behind, and a large number of the optimization approach can be applied and uh, are being evaluated. Uh, some of those, and they are the major points and the major uh, tasks, or we can say a major operations uh, and the efforts can be employed in order to optimize the water injection uh, profile is to perform frequently or to apply the water in a of technique. So any method that is, can retard and eliminate the progress of water production by either minimizing or completely avoiding water production must be considered. So, and it should be applied quickly as soon as uh, the you have the ability to perform this water shut off and you have the resources and the tools, don't hesitate and do it uh, quickly as you can. So this would lead to a better uh, results and would lead to a successful uh, uh, impact in terms of uh, improving your water flooding and increasing your ultimate reserves. There is some the one of the as we were saying the tasks or uh, uh, operations that is uh, are famous and commonly used is to make a pattern rotation or modification so a uh, pattern is not something like a fixed and you have to work uh, till the end of the life of the field so you can it easy can be rotated and or change it uh, and by cross flooding uh, and changing the directions and the orientation of the injection uh, to production interference, this would uh, uh, avail and support your uh, secondary recovery mechanism and uh, lead you to get a more successful uh, results and uh, an optimized uh, in, a, in a very optimized way. So just changing or applying a slight change or a major change in the water injection pattern 
is also one of the tools and uh, and one of the technique and the strategies that we would uh, take it to improve and to maximize the efficiency of the water injection. The third uh, strategy or task is uh, to do an inflow training or placing an additional well uh, within the reservoir even after uh, you apply the particular pattern. So the immediate benefit of uh, the infill well, of course, it's a higher uh, production rate, but it maybe it can sustain for a while or just suffer a decline rate even much higher than the previous. So at that time, just what you are doing is accelerating the production, nothing else. Water flooding can be improved by reducing the spacing between wells. So if you reduce the spacing, you may get a higher recovery. So at low spacing, you can achieve the greater recovery mechanism. So it's no longer or uh, not only uh, accelerating the production, but also it can maximize uh, uh, the ultimate recurve, ultimate recovery, and at the same time reducing the, the bypass and movable oil. Additional recovery should be evaluated versus the cost of, of modifying the patterns. This is, of course, an, an important uh, step that has to, you have to put your eyes always on the on the net present value and the payout time of your uh, change or if you if you are planning to introduce any change by either a drilling a well for a production or injection, so you have to understand how will be or how fast will be the efficiency and the gain that will be resulted. So the rate of acceleration should be uh, considered in the evaluation. So to, in order to uh, illustrate and emphasize on uh, on the concept of uh, infill well drilling. So the drilling of uh, additional well in a fully developed reservoir are called the infill well drilling. So it either having uh, two results, either that is the original uh, production rate of the field. So by applying or adding uh, a new wells that may show a rise up and sharp rise up and flashing in the field uh, production rate. So later you find an acute decline, an acute decline than what it was uh, before the adding the new well and before the drilling. So at that time, it may decline and uh, return back to the same points and the same ultimate recovery that you would obtain uh, without draining that wheel. So at that time, what just what you are earning is this kind of acceleration uh, that you get a higher production rate in uh, just a, a sooner time. But in some times, it may work differently. At that time, that is a field production rate and the extrapolation of your decline of your daily field production rate. And you may get an incremental recovery by having this kind of production rate and having the same slope, not have an acute or a stable slope. So you will have as the same slope at that time, you will lead to get either the bypass the oil or increase the production from an swept area or areas that will not be, uh, or the area of, of which the oil will not be moved easily to the current existing well. So the new well now is offering uh, a great benefit by having uh, uh, a much, uh, an, an observable and reasonable uh, rise up in the ultimate recovery factor. And not only accelerating or uh, rise up the field daily production rate, but also maximizing your recovery. So now we understood that uh, how will be the pattern, the injection pattern, and how we can a little enhance those pattern either by doing a water shot of application or by rotating the injection or rechanging the injection pattern or doing and introducing the infill with draining. Now we are going to review some of the actual cases and. Uh, so I will try to capture an example for each pattern in order to. Uh, expresses idea uh, effectively. So hereby we have an external water injection example. There is a field that have uh, about 160 producer well, a big field uh, on a domal structure. This is a structure map that is uh, the greatest or the highest side of the field and that is the lowest side. We have, there is some faults in the field, but uh, 
uh, this most of these faults are uh, non-sealing fault or leaking fault. So it's, it transmit the, uh, the fluid uh, the fluid movement through uh, or within those faults. So it's a uh, that domal oil reservoir. This is a uh, oil water contact where that is the oil pool and all of this is the aquifer. So the operator designed it to uh, punch the injection uh, wells are in deep, the, uh, in deep side of the reservoir in the aquifer, in the, which is are very far from the producer and deeper than the oil water contact. So it's a, um, a sick reservoir. That was the reason why those faults are uh, not completely sealed because uh, it's a very sick reservoir, about uh, 100 meter height or 300 uh, feet. So this the represents the sand, the density neutron, and that is resistivity. This is the oil water contact, where are uh, uh, the water is coming uh, upward or moving from uh, bottom to up. And that are the injection wells where are placed in the down structure in the deep aquifer board. So it's uh, the exit. It's uh, a uh, 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 a perfect uh, uh, example for a typical external water injection where you are injection injecting in the aquifer, not intended to be in the. Uh, closer to the oil water contact. It just want to uh, maximize uh, the, the efficiency of the aquifer and increase the strength and increasing the powerful uh, forces and uh, efficiency of the aquifer without having uh, a direct or explicit water flooding application. So just you are injecting the wells in, and the bunching the injection wells in the aquifer. So by placing the injection well in the aquifer, you're just injecting the aquifer and the aquifer will be responsible for uh, driving the oil towards the producer well. So it's uh, again, uh, just to get, shed some light on the reservoir features. It's a sandstone reservoir, big giant reservoir, where the anticline have a 10 kilometer uh, length by a four kilometer uh, wide, a high horizontal permeability from 300 to 900, but it has a great vertical permeability, the vertical permeability 0.8 and 0.6. And if you remember with this kind of, uh, of bottom up movement with a high vertical permeability, this really can uh, uh, boss uh, a thread for uh, an effective uh, driving uh, or effective water flooding application. And that's what makes the, uh, the operator choose the a far position of the injection uh, wells uh, in order to perform uh, uh, adequately the, the displacement of the oil, not directly to the oil, but to the aquifer and the aquifer who will push up the producer wheel. It has an oil, black oil viscosity uh, a heavy, black oil with a heavy viscosity that around 8 centibos. So it is unfavorable mobility. So the internal injection would be a, a problem, but the external injection would be a benefit because to avoid this kind of uh, uh, unfavorable uh, uh, mobility ratio can lead to uh, a great fingering and a problem of cooling and so on. So the injector well are being placed here and the injected water is driving the aquifer and the aquifer in turn is responsible to uh, produce and to push the produced oil and to uh, arrest the decline in the reservoir bridge. Also it worth to highlight that is in some times they involved uh, an internal water injection in order to solve a particular part of the reservoir where they are starting the inefficiency of the uh, cooling or the unfavorable mobility ratio started to uh, play a role in reducing the efficiency. So they started to place an uh, injector well uh, within the oil bank and they doing or introducing another internal injection besides external injection. So this is uh, an example of the reservoir pressure that is a static or shut, the static or shut in pressure of each individual well. So they grouped the wells 
over the time that are the producer will starting it's a mature field so it started uh, earlier in the uh, back to uh, 58 and the res initial reservoir pressure was 4000 psi and it started declining and that is was the time that they commenced the water injection and that black line represented the average reservoir pressure while uh, the, those points represent the pressure of each individual producer well. So once they started uh, the external injection, an observable rise up in the reservoir pressure was uh, uh, responded accordingly. And there is some another decline in the reservoir pressure uh, take later, took later, then and they uh, started an internal injection and combined the external injection with an internal injection, and that caused uh, the pressure to stabilize a little. It also uh, valuable to point out that is there is some uh, a water shutoff application campaign was applied in order to optimize the efficiency of the water injection that lead to increasing the uh, response and the performance of the uh, water injection by keeping the reservoir pressure in a higher way or in a higher uh, profile. So reviewing the field performance, the field is we we're saying started in late uh, 58, that uh, represents the black uh, curve represents the uh, liquid production rate per, per day, while the green uh, curve represents the production of oil. The blue curve uh, the, the light blue curve represents a water cut, while uh, the dark blue represents a water or ratio. Here is a relation, or the, uh, this curve demonstrates the cumulative of oil and the water, the produced water, and the injected water as well. While that curve is a relation between the water or ratio on a liquid scale, but with the cumulative oil uh, as in a log log scale. So here we would have uh, that the external injection would have started at that time. You observed an rise up in the uh, production rate, daily production rate. Then on a particular moment, the injection rate was started uh, or was rise up with the development, uh, but it's subjected to a decline again. And the water cut was started to increase. That's why they choose to add internal injection at the time of uh, the end of 2006, that uh, yielded to an rise up in the field daily production rate. And sometimes the water cut still was growing, but they were working here as a uh, water shut off application that trying to flatten and to minimize the growth of the water cut and the water production. If you will uh, extrapolate the water oil ratio as we were discussing till 50, uh, where it represents a, a economic limit of uh, produced uh, oil and water, it would uh, provide about 400 uh, million barrels of oil to be ultimately recoverable. Just by uh, holding the, the perception uh, of the uh, incremental gain uh, by uh, considering or uh, investigating the decline curve analysis utilizing ARBIS model, that curve is a cumulative uh, uh, daily production versus the, uh, the daily production rate versus the cumulative uh, of produced oil, but on a Cartesian scale. So that one represents the uh, exponential decline scheme and while that one represents a harmonic decline scheme. With the harmonic we got about 340 while uh, with uh, uh, exponential decline we got 310. But if you compare it with the 400 there is still a wide difference and uh, uh, a major uh, contrast uh, in the results. But one of the implications that you can figure out from the uh, decline curve analysis that would be the uh, decline rate and the ultimate recovery that would be obtained with the primary re recovery mechanism. But with applying external water injection, we extend the life of the reservoir and till that moment where the decline rate were about to uh, diminish and deteriorate and the ultimate recovery 
factor, uh, uh, ultimate recoverable reserves would be that value. But the, when they started the internal water injection, which is caused another rise up in the production rate and another flash, and that flash extended longer and also it's upgraded and another decline uh, behavior. But again, that is uh, the current scheme. They would, or they are thinking to apply another scheme button, so they may, we also would increase and uh, prolong the run life and the recoverable reserves. But at the end, eventually you can uh, observe how was the differences between uh, the primary driving mechanism and secondary deriving mechanism with external, and after modifying it with the internal, you gained also that more, more uh, that amount of oil uh, in Belize. So one of the key messages uh, or, uh, or messages should be delivered is that is the confidence of water or ratio prediction method is more effective than ARBIS decline curve analysis method, especially in complicated model. Uh, like what you are saying here, several wells and a uh, huge giant uh, reservoir. The second uh, message is that our important uh, learned lessons that you can uh, uh, get from this application is a combination of two different injection bar bar patterns can yield a positive result in a particular condition, like what we, we are or what they faced in this uh, application or in this project. Another example, now we shifted from the external uh, water injection to the internal water injection, but in the peripheral uh, pattern. That is a reservoir where it's a carbonate reservoir. It's a big giant reservoir as well, and the clan reservoir was even much bigger than uh, the aerial one. It, it's, is this uh, a case in Saudi Arabia? You have a 25 kilometer times 15 kilometer. It's a heterogeneous permeability. The permeability varies from 5 to 500 mL C. But uh, the good thing here is uh, you are, they are dealing with a light oil viscosity, where the viscosity is 0.5 centibars. That is, uh, was the original oil water contact, and that is the placement of the aquifer while the producer are producing from the structure, the top structure side in the anticline. This is a typical uh, profile of the well uh, and, and typical open hole log. That is a gamma ray, and that is a, a porosity log or a density log that can estimate the porosity. A lower density indicates uh, a good or a higher porosity. The porosity is going uh, less by having this higher density, and at the same time, high clay content indicating by uh, the higher uh, presence of the gamma ray, uh, the background of the gamma ray. So we can easily recognize from this uh, typical log uh, that the upper side have a less porosity and might be a less permeability, while the middle part has an, a good or higher permeability and higher porosity, while the bottom part of the reservoir has an back quality that uh, attribute to the presence of the clay and the less porosity. So they place this injection well for all circumference. The circumference of the uh, field has been bounded by all of the injection well. And one of the key elements of the injection well, as we, we, we uh, explained and mentioned earlier, you have to bound all your reservoir by injection well. Unlike the external, the external, since it's not work directly to the oil reservoir, and it doesn't matter, just it, it's put uh, some water, uh, some volume of water in order to activate and uh, increase the efficiency of aquifer. That is the case of the external, but in the uh, peripheral water injection where it can be a, 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 a tool and the method of the water flooding, you have to precisely uh, and adequately uh, orient the injector well in order to support the displacement of the oil. So the injection scheme bound most of area of uh, the reservoir. This is the performance of the well. That is the rate of uh, in thousand barrel per day. That is the reservoir pressure where it was decreased and uh, just uh, uh, before falling to towards the bubble point, they commenced the water injection, and that is the oil rate, and that is the start of the water injection, and that is the water injection. 
here's a water rate that uh, started to uh, break through at, uh, uh, after about 10 years of starting the water injection. So the injection rate, uh, this chart would imply how was the voidage ratio that we talked uh, earlier. Uh, the voidage ratio, it may be about two, and where you are producing at uh, an average uh, 700 and producing less 40, so the voidage ratio was more than two. That what caused the reservoir pressure to rise up. And then it become constant that due to the fact that the voidage ratio is closer to be a two, but in some times it uh, approached to one. So there is some uh, a variety in the water voidage replacement ratio, but it's uh, closer to be a little bit more than one. And uh, when the oil uh, or the production oil production rate uh, was decreased, the voidage ratio has increased and that's what causes the reservoir pressure to rise up. There was a water injection that uh, the water production that was observed, and a surveillance uh, method uh, was uh, applied in order. A surveillance, uh, uh, several surveillance methods were applied in order to uh, assess and uh, the performance of the water flooding. So they recording an RST log or RMT log or uh, reservoir saturation two log. That is a gamma ray, and that is RST. RST log is simply is uh, a tool and uh, log that you can understand the, the water saturation and the area where there is some water and the perforation or the depths and of uh, where it is still have an oil. So a low uh, water, or water saturation or a low sigma or a higher oil saturation would have uh, on the right side. While a high uh, water saturation that uh, can be founded with high sigma, and at that time this uh, indicates the location of water. The theory of uh, the, uh, the RST or RMT, this is um, an example of RST is being uh, uh, drawn on a reverse way. That is a gamma ray, that is uh, an illustration showing the gas and the water. And that is the sigma values for a several uh, rock types and the several fluid types. For the oil, the sigma should be from 18 to 22. The saline with the, or water with a high salinity should uh, give a higher salinity. So this contrast would be uh, the key element of differentiating between the oil and water. Still, for the water that has a moderate or modest uh, salinity, the different is still existing and you can differentiate. But uh, if you have a fresh water or very low water salinity, at that time you cannot able to differentiate between the uh, oil or water utilizing the sigma. So the sigma is, uh, is a tool that can work with a higher salinity environment and is, uh, by, is being uh, expressed by plotting uh, the well on a, a reverse, or plotting the, the curve and the log on a reverse direction. So once you plot it in the reverse direction, the low sigma showing it in a hydrocarbon, the higher sigma showing uh, a presence of water. This is like an, uh, an example is uh, explaining the, the problem of having uh, uh, or how can the water cut uh, can advance it in the reservoir? If you have two layers, the first layer has an uh, oil with an uh, water, and the second layer has an oil and water originally as well. But this water is a residual uh, or initial water situation or connect water situation. And this is the oil water content. After a, a part or a, a, a period of production, they notice that the sigma has increased in the upper layer while the lower layer kept the sigma low. So strictly forward, that is a saturation, a higher water saturation existing in the bottom layers, indicating uh, or evidencing uh, an rise up of the water uh, in a channeling or in a layering effect. So this is if you have a layering effect on, the, uh, 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 on your reservoir and that uh, According or this is one of the things or the problems that would uh, reduce the efficiency of the water injection. While this class uh, or this uh, uh, form uh, 
is just explaining the how can be the story and the situation if you have a water up. So if you have a water up, you would find that is uh, higher or uh, uh, the upper interval would keep uh, has the same original sigma and the same uh, original water saturation, while the lower intervals is showing up an increase in the sigma and an increase in water saturations, and it means that the water has been advanced from the uh, uh, or greatly on the lower interval, and it means that the water is being advanced bottom up. So you can understand how the uh, differences and the progress uh, of the oil water contact, either by layering or edge away or on bottom up, by just having uh, a record of the RST on a periodic time or in a lapse of time, so you understand uh, or construct the differences. And the idea of having the sigma or RST or RMT on a reverse direction, RST is a same terminology of R RMT and some TDT, all have the same uh, uh, concept and the same tool, but with a different commercial uh, names. So the idea of having it on a reverse direction is to give the perception uh, and compare the it by the uh, resistivity log. Why the resistivity has the uh, opposite uh, directions or a normal uh, scale? The lowest is located on the left side, while a higher resistivity locates on the right side. So higher resistivity implies a presence of hydrocarbon. Lower resistivity implies uh, a presence of uh, water. The sigma is being uh, plotted on a reverse direction in order to just increase the analogy and having a quick look interpretation. So, I'll, so have the same performance of the, uh, the same resistivity can do. So once there is, you have a resistivity profile that demonstrates the oil from water and you got the uh, RST, if the RST is similar to the what you uh, have or what you got before from the resistivity, so it indicate no basic differences uh, in the situation. If you have some uh, differences between the sigma or rise up in the value of the sigma by having this curve on that direction, so it means there's some advance in the oil water contact. So this is the uh, idea of having the sigma on reverse direction rather than normal direction is to make it similar and to mimic the same uh, signature of the resistivity. So again, they recorded and they did a time lapse uh, progress uh, in order to track the progress of the water saturation in the reservoir. That was the sigma indicating an oil and the sigma is going higher and the greater, so indicating a much more water on the, in the middle part of the well. And the, this represents a progress and how is the water is being uh, advanced and the, ri the rise up of the water saturation in the middle part of the uh, reservoir and the middle part of the well. And this was calibrated by punching another well in, uh, in the middle and found it that uh, a, a gradient of oil in the upper structure and the lower structure, while uh, uh, noticing a water gradient in the middle structure. 0.42 and 0.52 is uh, strictly forward uh, sign for water, while uh, 0.3 is a sign of uh, presence of hydrocarbon. So they did like uh, a survey on uh, several uh, wells and did this kind of cross sections from north to south and from east to west in order to uh, assess the water injection and the development of the oil water, uh, of the encroachment of the water, uh, of the injected water towards the produced oil. So from A to uh, A dash, this uh, on these uh, cross sections, they found that that is the well A, and that is the well uh, J, which is uh, locating in on that direction. So that uh, <coughs> cross sections that are crossing the field on uh, on this direction show that the resist the water saturation is being progressive in the middle of the reservoir, 
and it was, uh, was a common feature in all the wells that had been uh, recorded and uh, logged for the RST. While the upper part of the reservoir and the lower part is still kept an oil. And the reason behind that is that because the middle part, as we explained in, uh, in the earlier part of the case, was both the greater porosity and the greater permeability interval, while the lower and upper part have an less uh, quality respect to the uh, middle part. And when they got uh, an, a cross section from P to P and the southern side, they found it that the oil and that is the RST, so the RST has been changed in the middle in all, in most of the wells. And that oil is still in the upper part and the lower part, but they didn't find uh, any water or any uh, uh, water situation in uh, the middle uh, here. And because that is the direction of the water injections, so the water injection is being moved uniformly. There is no injection here because the reservoir was benched out. So earlier there was with competency and uh, efficiency, but uh, vertically there is some uh, problems due to the quality of the layer. So they drew with an, uh, flood front and that was the original oil water contact and that is the area that was displaced by the oil water uh, front and so oil water front is being progressed and developed on the uh, toward the producer wells on the crust. But the problem is that on this part, they noted the, some uh, portions of the reservoir that in the top side of the reservoir and the bottom side of the reservoir is still unswept oil and uh, some remaining reserve uh, considerably are still existing and trapped down, uh, the, down uh, in the reservoir. So, one of the things that uh, we would understand from that case, that is a continuous monitoring of the reservoir pressure, provide a representative indication about the driving mechanism, and also show a consistency between water flooding and the reservoir performance. Also, you may understand that is a, a, a learning effect and uh, variation in rock type and permeability can lead to uh, an inadequate uh, or a bypassed oil or unswept oil as we saw it in that uh, board. So another example is a peripheral edge water injection. Uh, this is the original oil water. So it's uh, still a peripheral uh, water injection, but it's not bottom up uh, like the area as a briefest case. It's uh, like an edge water where you have this structure that is the oil water contact and the dipping is moving uh, on that direction. That is the highest point and point the part of the reservoir, and that is the lowest and deepest point of the reservoir. The producer well are locating here, and that is the injector well are placed at the proximity of the injection. So it's uh, a a, a typical or ideal uh, scheme of the injection well, uh, of the peripheral injection pattern, where the injection uh, are placed closer to the oil water contact and surround the producer well from the direction of the uh, water encroachment. So, again, the producer well placed upper structures, the injector well here, so it's a peripheral each water injection. This is a production profile. Uh, from uh, that is the time where they started the injection, and you would find the rise up and the significant uh, uh, increase uh, or rise on the on the production rate, but it followed with uh, a rise up in the water uh, production as well. That led in the latest period uh, of the peripheral water injection pattern to have this kind of uh, aggressive decline uh, in the in the daily production rate. And that the extrapolation of uh, the water cut and the extrapolation of oil would lead to uneconomic uh, production and the field will uh, uh, be completely uh, died and uh, abandoned at uh, 2015. So the sharp rise up in the water production accompanied to the production decline was a problem that uh, required an interference and the change in the methodology of the water uh, injection in order to optimize and to maximize and get uh, a greater uh, efficiency or a greater, uh, if, I mean, a greater impact uh, rather than having this kind of uh, uh, performance 
that showing uh, a reduction or a decline in the uh, effectiveness of the water flooding. So also the static reservoir pressure, when they uh, reviewed the static reservoir pressure, they found that uh, the injector are very far from the crystal part that lead to the pressure to fall below the bubble point and some gases was produced and uh, forming uh, a small gas cap. So uh, getting out the wells here was uh, an, uh, a critical uh, issue that should uh, be avoided. Also a wide pressure range for, and brush, a wide pressure gradient from 2,500 to 1,000 uh, BSI this is really a great differences in the, uh, in the grid pressure range that would restrict an effective uh, development strategy. So was, uh, the plan is to place the injection as an, uh, and the change from uh, the peripheral water injection to a combined a peripheral plus uh, in, uh, an injection that are going on uh, irregular uh, because it will be a dispersed, so you are placing uh, just a two injector within the oil bank, but uh, with a non-systematic way, is not a spot pattern, and is not a central, it's just in the oil bank, uh, so it's considered as an, uh, uh, again, it, it may be uh, the typical case of the irregular or dispersed water injection. So that was like the plan in 2004. So this is the world pressure, and that is a static pressure or shutting pressure of each uh, well. And this is the performance of the injection. So you would find here, that is the start of the uh, peripheral water injection. So they have an increase in the reservoir pressure, but followed was uh, a great uh, or a big discrepancy between the upper pressure limit and the lower pressure limit, where it fall below the bubble point. In 2005, after uh, the recommendation to switch and to change it to dispersed water injections, an uh, observable improve has been noted on the pressure performance and the pressure started to rise up and uh, above the bubble point, while the pressure becoming a narrow uh, limit or in a narrow range that uh, uh, would uh, generate and would produce an effective driving uh, strategy. So uh, the injection on the peripheral was completely shifted toward the dispersed water injection, and the, the injection was uh, replaced the, the peripheral by another uh, five injector wells. While the isobar map, as was explained and uh, uh, was duplicated in the previous chart, was becoming a narrow range from 2002 just to 1500 psi. So that wide range of uh, pressure uh, would uh, improve the efficiency of the uh, secondary driving mechanism. And those well, those uh, part of the reservoir was completely flooded out and uh, and has the water saturation that was recorded indicating a full uh, uh, water uh, saturation for uh, with no uh, room for unswept oil, indicating that its efficiency has been improved and has been in, uh, enhanced in this part by just doing this kind of shift. This is uh, the actual performance. The production rate become increased uh, for a while, and but was declined and then it become stable. The rise up in the water injection start growing and start increased, but with a less amount than it was. So uh, just comparing with what was extrapolated, if we lift the, bat the peripheral pattern and do nothing, you would get a, we would get a higher water cut. 70% transparency and 60, and the less oil comparable with oil. So this amount of oil was gained oil uh, productions, and that represents the incremental oil gain uh, that was obtained uh, according to the change and the shift from the injection from being an uh, peripheral water injection into a dispersed water injection. Uh, this led to about 3.5 million barrels of oil as an incremental gain. So one of the examples uh, or the, the key messages that should be uh, learned uh, and understood carefully from this example, that is you have to 
uh, understand and diagnose the reservoir pressure, how it's being developed and uh, drawing the isobar map in order to uh, uh, evaluate the efficiency of the water injection. At the same time, you, uh, you have to understand uh, or to uh, to realize that is a changing of injection pattern may have uh, an effective water injection profile. Sorry for. Another example of repeating a pattern. Uh, it's in the case of North American, where it's a dolomite reservoir with low permeability, it's light oil viscosity. Uh, this uh, reservoir has a uh, water flood as the secondary uh, recovery uh, mechanism, and uh, it was started in 1966. There are a 40-acre five spot. So now it's a five spot uh, mechan pattern that has a 40-acre spacing. They had a plan to change, uh, not, not to change the pattern, but to uh, change the spacing and to increase uh, the number of well and the intensity of the well by draining more infill wells and at that time decrease the uh, spacing. So they uh, uh, reestablish another injection profile and another injection plant uh, or expanded the injection plant to, to for support and, uh, and avail the water for the newly added injector well. But what they will get, they got this incremental oil uh, that was uh, time of uh, starting infill well and the decrease the spacing and the minimizing the uh, pattern size of the injection. They were running with a 408 wells. They increased it to 588. That was uh, well, that is a decline of the uh, field, daily field, field production without applying this uh, extensive uh, work of infill well drilling. And that was the performance after drilling and the decrease the spacing. They so got about uh, 33 million barrel of oil or 13% gain in the incremental recoverable reserve. So increasing the infill well intensity may result in increased production rate as well as uh, incremental oil recovery. And that was the case in this example. Another uh, five spot but uh, it's just a small uh, size of the reservoir in North America as well. Uh, it's a, but it's an 80 acre spacing, but just this is uh, a one single uh, producer well and the four injectors. Uh, it's a five spot pattern, typical uh, form of uh, five spot. This uh, oil production was declined and they started uh, the injection in the uh, middle of. Uh, 89. So with the start of the injection, uh, the GUR that uh, was jumped highly were dropped and decreased uh, significantly, allowing the oil uh, to production to rise up back again and to get another surge and another wave of the oil production after it was like uh, diminished uh, almost. Uh, this is uh, a water injection that also uh, has uh, been uh, introduced to the field or to the producer well as an effect or uh, due to the impact of having an injection uh, that already started. But although there is some water injections that uh, uh, was uh, generated as an abibus uh, process, but there is some unobservable gain in the oil production. So these might be compensated, that's what we'll see. So investigating the log water oil ratio versus a cumulative oil, we would have this chart where you have uh, about uh, 320 uh, million, uh, thousand barrel of oil would be uh, recovered. Uh, if you just uh, see and uh, apply ARBIS decline curve analysis, you will have uh, that is the oil rate versus the cumulative production. That is the late time where you, if you projected the, the decline rate of the oil in order to uh, intercept the cumulative oil, you would get about 320, a pretty similar uh, value to the log water oil ratio technique. But from that chart, you cannot understand or predict how it will be the performance or the recovery uh, barrier to the water uh, injection 
from the log water oil ratio because essentially there is no water at that time. But you can uh, easily uh, recognize it from uh, the decline curve analysis technique utilizing ARBIS uh, method by which you that was barrier to uh, the water injection. The ultimate recoverable surface was about uh, uh, 50, uh, 70, so the incremental gain is 250,000 barrel of oil. And that gain was just by adding four injective wells, which achieved uh, an effective uh, uh, NBT because the cost, uh, that, uh, drill, uh, the cost for the drilling was uh, much less than the uh, gained oil uh, production uh, that they sold. So the water oil ratio prediction technique is consistent with ARBIS decline method in simple model, in particular a small reservoir, unlike the case where it was uh, too much complicated. Also, the button injection reveal a significant impact and higher efficiency in marginal or small pools. So rather than having uh, um, injection on, uh, uh, on a or a different injection button may lead uh, to a different result, but they choose the best uh, button for their particular conditions uh, at which they uh, yield to get an uh, observable result. Here is an, an example of repeating a pattern as well, that the production barrier uh, to the water injection, and that one boosts the water injection, this is the number of uh, active well. Although they increase the number of well, it didn't help them uh, to arrest the decline or to minimize the decline of uh, daily productions. And uh, at that time, at that time, they should think about applying the UR application. So some specific cases require the use of UR technology as a tertiary recovery is essential and must to increase the field uh, run life. Uh, in order to inspect the, in order to inspect the water injection pattern comparison, we have uh, several cases here. Uh, as an example, that uh, that's just a simulation work in order to explain how will be the reaction and the response uh, of applying a particular uh, water injection or water flooding mechanism. So they placed, the, in case one, a peripheral water injection uh, surrounding a particular producer well, and they increased the intensity of and reduced the spacing of the uh, injector to producer uh, pattern. And uh, in case three, they uh, shifted to a particular pattern. It was uh, a five spot and uh, nine spot in case five and uh, having a case of uh, seven spot in case four. Then uh, they inspected how it will be the response and the production outcome of each application. That is a primary depletion. Of course, they are equal, equal on, uh, on all for all cases. Then uh, with the starting of the injection, the red curve is the uh, case number five, uh, where they have uh, an online spot, and they have to choose or to drill about 12 uh, producer well with 12 injector wells. Uh, sorry, 13 injector well uh, corresponding to a 12 in producer well. So that yielded to a good uh, recovery, but it, it has the same uh, value uh, can be obtained by uh, case number uh, two. And case number two is a peripheral water injection, but with just nine producer well and eight injector wells. So with less number of wells, they can obtain uh, uh, the same recoveries that can be achieved by a particular uh, spot pattern. The peripheral uh, injection or the peripheral uh, injection, which case one, was uh, the lowest or the least uh, value that uh, didn't uh, help too much or didn't achieve uh, the incremental gain, that, uh, the desired incremental gain. So this is just an example how well it depends from a field to field according to the characteristics of the reservoir, the placement arrangement, the, the types of uh, the fluids is being used, the types of the fluid in the reservoir is being displaced. All those are factors are grouped together in order to 
achieve the, uh, uh, a certain performance that you have to interfere with and to maximize the impact of the water injection uh, by either, as we illustrated earlier, in, by a drilling or changing if, or frequently it changes the injection pattern or trying to reduce the water uh, production by applying any of water injection technique, uh, water uh, shutoff technique. The last uh, point, uh, the recovery consideration, if you remember this by chart of maturity chart, that is a residual, that is a cumulative, and that is a reserve, and that what we left behind or the oil should be produced, but is not produced. That to address it effectively, we can introduce to you the efficiency of the displacement or the efficiency of the water injection, and this will be the start uh, point of our topic tomorrow of the polymer injection. The recovery or the overall uh, recovery efficiency is uh, uh, multiplication of the displacement efficiency. The displacement is how the oil is being displaced when it was contacted by the water. For example, the water has displaced some of the oil and left uh, some of the oil trapped and the course of the water uh, direction and the water movement will be moved and left that amount of oil uh, and that oil uh, will be trapped owing to the uh, what we call it the displacement efficiency. So this is uh, a representation of the displacement efficiency that water comes and they get out without displacing this oil and uh, moving around that oil and didn't displace it effectively. But what means by aerial sweep efficiency? The aerial sweep efficiency, if you would uh, see, that is the injection and that is the production. The injection here is moved uh, toward the producer well, and uh, there is some area, although there is some breakthrough on those uh, producer wells, but there is some area that uh, didn't, uh, some portion of the reservoir and some oil hasn't been displaced yet. And uh, there is some water production observed on all wells, but there is some oil is still yet to produce and should be produced. That's what expressed by aerial uh, sweep efficiency. And there is some vertical sweep efficiency. If you remember the case of uh, <clears throat> the peripheral uh, water injection <clears throat> uh, where it was a dolomite, uh, they have or suffering from a, a, a vertical sweep efficiency or a, a vertical deficiency, but uh, rather than having the water in uh, the upper layer or a, a big uh, uh, a sieve layer that are in the top structures, you would have it in the middle. So if you have this kind of layering effect and the variation in the permeability that would lead to the water can reach from the injector to the producer while it is still progressing and advancing in the other layers that are having a less quality respect to the, uh, the high berm streak. So one of the, the and this one is a introduction to the UR method that is in order to override and to uh, minimize uh, the bypass the oil and increasing this efficiency in order to reduce all this amount of oil it has to, the EOR application has to be uh, employed uh, and introduced to the system as a tertiary recovery uh, mechanism. But there is some application that worth it to be highlighted is uh, there is some uh, a specific and uh, advanced applications that can be used uh, and it's as simple and uh, cheaper uh, is uh, utilizing a multi-stage injection. What does it mean? For example, this, if you have a, this kind of layering effect and you are, this is a normal combination injection and you are combining, commingling all the layer without having this multi-stage. So what you will have if you are injecting the water and displacing the oil, you have this high berm streak. Remember, it's uh, pretty closer to the example of the uh, second case of our uh, speech of today. And you will have a production of oil and water and uh, you get a premature water out. And most probably you may, if you, that amount of water is more than 95%, you will shut down that well and leave th this oil uh, uh, unswept or unproduced. So there is some an application or technology has been uh, emerged is uh, you can just place a bucket 
and some a control a rate control system in order to dedicate a particular amount of rate for each interval and for each zone. At that time, you would avoid uh, a higher water that goes for a particular uh, layer uh, over or comparable with uh, other uh, layers that uh, didn't get that amount of water. So that safe zone would have or would receive a particular and the designed amount of water, same is like what the other low berm interval will get. So if you introduce, if we apply and install this multi-stage injection, you would able to normalize and stabilize the flood front and um, advance it in a piston-like uh, system over the all injected layers and you have a uniform progress of the water uh, flood front that would uh, display the oil uniformly and override the vertical sweep efficiency. But still, the aerial sweep efficiency did it, end. it just work on the vertical sweep efficiency. So it improved uh, the vertical sweep efficiency and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, solve the problem of mobility issue it can delay the injected water breaks through to the producer and it can also reduce the number of injection wells so you can injection injecting several reservoir rather than have uh, a sign or a dedicate a particular uh, injector well for uh, uh, each reservoir so you can combine this system with a several reservoir also minimize uh, the number of tubing string and the injection wells and minimize surface and the completion equipment also protected casing from overall uh, well integrity because there's some backers that can uh, protect the casing from being corroded over the time how this multi-stage injection is uh, works just this is uh, the case where you are having a commingling injection uh, or combining injection with a normal injection string or you can use uh, icd icd is inflow control devices with a particular uh, size of uh, each uh, uh, nozzle size, you would have a particular differential pressure that can allow you to control effectively over each interval. So this is the surface of a different uh, nozzle size, and that is the injection rate, the design, and this uh, differential pressure that would be resulted from having or injecting this uh, injection rate for our each uh, nozzle size. So we are placing a different uh, nozzle sizes, and each nozzle size with a, each injection rate can offer a particular uh, differential pressure. So at the end, you have that ICDs with the backers in your injection system. You can also utilize the gas lift system. Yes, it can be the gas lift. Uh, it's usually used for uh, producer wells, but can be installed in the injection wells, but at that time it will be in the reverse direction where it allow for a control of a particular amount of the injected water into each interval. So using the side bucket mandrel and the water flood valves can be placed in order to uh, assign or control and uh, partitionize and uh, cause some uh, discretizations in the injection uh, rates in order to assign uh, a particular injection for uh, each interval. So in order to stress and explain it uh, uh, in, in a detailed uh, uh, way, this is a representation of the permeability over the depths. So you have a, um, uh, uh, a long permeability and you have a tight uh, berm interval and you have a moderate interval and the high berm streak interval 1500 ml darcy and you have a moderate water interference or a high a moderate uh, berm permeable interval we have the three classes of the permeability the low permeability the moderate permeability and the high permeability how does this ICDs or uh, gas lift mandrel work? It's just simply it applying a risk restriction or high nozzle size or high valve opening size that generate a less friction on those two intervals and do the opposite for the uh, other high berm intervals. So you are applying a great restriction and a small nozzle size for the high berm streak in order to create a massive differential pressure that at the end may be equalized with a uh, low berm interval. So 
with this way, you, you just normalize all the injection to be uh, aligned in the same direction. I get uh, the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanjir, for Mustafa, for the great presentation. And thank you, everyone, for hanging with us until the end of this presentation. We know it's, uh, it's been a long day for you. So for that, uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. And the questions for today will be asked tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you, and have a good day. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.